Brendan, we'll just start with a, an injury update. I understand Cameron Carter because he's been out training this week. Is he available for the weekend? Yeah, he'll be available. Ali Johnson as well. Uh, uh, Oden Holm as well. He'll be, uh, be available. He'd been out um, for, for the last game. So, um, so, yeah, those three should come back in. And that's it. Everyone else, longer term, is, is still out at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I want to get a few players on that front, but everyone else back training with the group. Having big players like Cameron, possibly Alistair as well, returning, can I give you a big boost heading into this weekend? Yeah, listen, I think when you have that level of player that we've missed a lot over the course of the season, there's there's no doubt about that. Him coming back at this stage is, is very important for us. He obviously brings a, an authority and an assurance to the game for us. So, uh, so hopefully he can... Uh, he can stay injury free now to the rest of the season. I want to ask you about the the news of Joe Hart retiring. First of all, how did he approach it with you? Did did you have a a private conversation? Was it discussed, or did you just come out and say, "Look, this is my decision. This is what's happened." No, but we we spoke on it a little while back, so I knew it was what he was thinking, and then it was really just about the timing. Um, and I understood it. I've had a few players in that position where later in their career and whether they play on or go out at the top. and um, <clears throat> So, yeah, it doesn't seem that long ago when I, I seen Joe play for Shrewsbury and then come up against him in our, in our title race back in 2014 and obviously watched his career closely. And um, now he's been, you know, he, he's had an absolutely brilliant career. He's, um, but what's been really nice is to know him as a, as a person. I've seen him from the outside, and and football's a small world. You get to hear about different types of people and characters within changing rooms and and clubs. And he's always one that came across as being a really positive guy. But to get the chance to to see that every single day and work with him, it's uh, it's been a great honour to to work with him. But I also know he's super determined to to finish his career on a high, and I think that was the reason why to get it out now and and get it announced and then really concentrate on for the rest of the the season. But um but no, he's um a great man and um yeah, hopefully we can uh, have a good success for him. In terms of looking forward, does it give the club clarity, give the, the club time, upstairs time to look forward, look at options for the summer? Yeah, well there's plenty of time. <laughs> plenty of time. But um but yeah, I, I think we're clear. We're very clear on what we need to to improve on within the within the team and the squad, but certainly Joe Gowan, uh, you know, really sort of quickens that up in terms of looking to uh, to bring in someone for next year. How's the week been in terms of morale, in terms of atmosphere after the disappointing last minute equaliser against Kilmarnock last Saturday? Yeah, it, it's listen. We we take the time to analyse the the performance um, and the result, which no one wanted. So. We know that, but um, but that's what training's for, is to come back in, to analyse. We we went through it as a group. We looked at the things that were actually good in the game, of which there was. Sometimes they can get lost with the result and, and conceding late on, but there were some good elements to the game. Um, but then we we look very closely at the the qualities that's that, that's different when you're when you're trying to win titles and um, analyse them. And then the players been excellent in training, been very, very good. So, uh, so yeah, so we look to take that uh, good week into our training, hopefully, and at the weekend. You know how difficult it is to, to win titles. You're currently behind Rangers for the first time this season. They obviously played before you. The gap could go to five points. How crucial is it that you, you get back to winning ways you don't let that gap get any wider? No, it's just the, the, it's getting back to ensure we focus on ourselves. Because, like I said, we, we can't... We can't control anything that uh, Rangers or any other team does. So I've said it all season. We we can only focus on our own performance. You know, we we are, are not top of the league because of ourselves and the points that we've dropped. So, uh, but we have to learn from that, and we have to uh, be focused very much on our own performance. And that's what the next twelve games will be because it's still in our hands what it is we achieve this season. So. Uh, so we have to focus on that. You you touched there on how you've been uh, talking to the players about the the qualities they need to be champions. What are they, and what kind of needs needs to change? Do, do you feel to get your team back to the top of the table? Well, I think in terms of if you look, it's the consistency in 
and intensity in in game and obviously taking opportunities you know when we're with the ball creating opportunities and, and taking those for sure but also in in like the latter stages of games just seeing games out and how you manage those situations whether that's through an intensity to to stop a pass going forward or recovering your your shape as, as a team or even just fundamentally the defending the box in, in certain areas. So, um, so yeah. Just, so, look at specific moments in the game where we where we can be better. And I think obviously when you draw, listen, we've we've had what eight wins and, and two draws, and uh, and it feels like probably eight losses and and two draws. But um, but there's still been a lot of good in the games. It's just when the result disappoints, and at times the performance disappoints, then uh, then it doesn't give you a good feeling. So. My job is, along with the coaches, is to to train the players, to stay positive and, and keep that mentality and then look to be better in our next game. You spoke after the Camarno game about how slow slow play had uh, created anxiety in the stands. How, how are you going about kind of stomping that out from your team's play and what's going to change there? Yeah, it's more around, listen, there's no instruction to play slow. You know, I think any of you guys that were here when I was here the last time, and I don't like to to go on about that but I think if there's thing, if anything you could put in, in my team here or any of my other teams whether it was Swansea or Liverpool or Leicester whatever it, it was intensity and speed in the game so um, but in order to do that it's about playing forward quickly in order to do that you have to find the gaps and see the gaps and you've got to trust your, your ability to play through and I think whenever we've done that as a team and, and that intensity has been good, it's when we've progressed the, the ball quickly, got into good positions and then uh, the magic begins from that. But when it's slow and you play sidewards or backwards, then uh, it gives the opposition the chance to, to retreat and recover. So um, not every pass you can play forward, but the speed of the ball is, is so important. And then when you have that and you have the runs to match that, then, uh, then of course that brings a different dynamic to the game. Um, so that's that's the encouragement. It's, it's given that confidence to play the forward pass, to take that risk in the pass, um, because that's that's how we work. This is the first time in a long time your team ha- hasn't been top of the league. What sort of different challenge is this for you as a coach at, and for the players um, with that? There, there's no there's no positive or negative feeling with it. It's where we're at at the end of the season after the 38 games. You know, it, it it can fluctuate. It doesn't matter where where you sit now. It's it's where you are in the, at the end of the season. So for us, like I said, everything's in our hands. We need to be more consistent and find that. But but I see a group that's very very determined. And as I said, it's a very honest group of players. And and, and like I said, we're, we're getting some strength back into the into the squad as well, which should help us hopefully for these final twelve games. Uh, you talked last week about Leal Abad and, and his ongoing situation and the potential for a lo- loan move there. Has there been any update? No change, no. 